going to another live. And I'm going to go to our Discord and. All right, but yeah, um, yeah, about that like self segregation thing. That shit was weird, dude. Yeah, like I'm not gonna lie. Like, so a lot of people that's gonna turn off a lot of people. I get where they're coming from, though, right? Like, to be honest with you, like a lot of people stand the Black Panthers and stuff, and a lot of them were not like that because you know a lot of them like, like the yeah the Rainbow Coalition was a thing that involved like every race. Yes. But at the same time, like, Huey P. Newton would, like, like he would support the efforts of, like, the New Africa Project, for example, right? And those people were um, leftists, but they were also, like, se black separatists. Yeah. So they wanted, like, the southern United States for themselves, like, like Texas, uh, Florida, Mississippi, Tennessee, all those states, I mean, right? I have said, but I have said to the president before that, like, the only way to ethically uh, partition America is just give black people the entire Southeast and then give Native Americans the rest of the country. Yeah, pretty much. That I mean, that's what... Yeah, that's what the New Africa movement wanted. And I, I don't think that's what Huey specifically wanted for himself, like what he saw as his vision, but like, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a perspective that you kind of can respect. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like... I, I I'm not going to like... Be, why these people were going to like way. shit on people for... Yeah, sorry, what did you say? I was saying, like, I understand why people would end up this way. Like, I totally, although I'm not a black separatist, I do understand where those kind of ideas come from, being a black person myself, and dealing with a bunch of racist bullshit all the time. I do understand why you would want that. Because, yeah. like, and I understand to, like, a degree, black nationalism is just, like, a form of solidarity for colonized people. Yeah, and, like, black nationalism is, like, really different in a lot of cases, right? Right. Sometimes you got, like... There's like Nkrumahism. There's Pan Africanism, which is separate from Black nationalism specifically. Then you got the Black Panther style thing, which has the Rainbow Coalition, so it is integrated. And then you got your Black separatist. But there's a whole rich history there and like a lot of schools of thought. So like, yeah. it always like bothers me when people be like, "Yeah, you guys just want segregation again. Like, you right. guys are stupid." It's just like, yeah. well, it's some, more some complex than that. But yeah. But or even if they do, like I understand their reasoning behind, like, yeah. oh, you know, like, uh, white flight is a thing, or the fact that like integrated schools like still have a curriculum that still like lauds capitalism and lauds white supremacy and says like Christopher Columbus discovered the U.S. and all that stuff. Like, you know, I mean, integrating is not the only problem to be solved, and I some people like kind of have the idea that like oh like the black people couldn't run their own schools it's like it's not that they couldn't it's that they didn't have the right resources but right. at the end of the day i i'm not like the same type of person who wants separatism but i understand where that comes from like you know like be so god hard on those people you know yeah um uh let's see one second there we go Okay. Well, Wait, let me I think we got everything set up now. Uh, Alan, you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Oh, I think your video froze. Oh, damn. Uh, I might have just been sitting, though. I'm, like, pretty still sometimes, so don't mind me. No, dude, you're, like, your video is real still. One frame. Really? Yep, Dang. your mouth isn't moving. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, you're back. Uh, I'm back. Yeah, no problems. Okay. All right. All right. Hopefully that doesn't distract too much. Okay. And let's see. I'm gonna go to. There we go. All right. So, as you guys probably noticed, our the name of this day's stream is to nuclear or not to nuclear. Yeah, it should be a good one clear up some things um we noticed that a lot of people on the left are not big fans of nuclear for understandable um we didn't go too much into the history the econ side of things right. um and hopefully we could change some minds and explain why nuclear is something that should be looked it's not a panacea but it's something that 
is a viable option and will make things cleaner. Yeah. And I think we share the opinion of um, most other uh, science and technology oriented people on the left. Um, like I was listening to the um, Three Mile Island podcast, uh, the Three Mile Island episode of the uh, Well, There's a Problem podcast a while ago. And I think those guys, they're a bunch of engineers and mathematicians and stuff, uh, share basically the same opinions. That, that like the big, the major problems with nuclear power aren't the technology itself, but it's the uh, mode of production, i.e., capitalism. Yeah, this is not a controversial opinion by any. So yeah, I guess like we could pretty much go to the next slide. I guess All right. get to it. So yeah, so uh, yeah. So yeah, nuclear is a completely clean energy source. Um, it doesn't produce any. Um, it doesn't produce any um, waste gases. Uh, the only things you see coming out of those towers are water vapor. So, uh, with the exception of the uh, radioactive waste that comes off of them, which can be stored in barrels and buried. Um, there is no, there, there is no waste that comes off of them besides that. And like I said, there are no gases escaping to our atmosphere and cooking our planet. It's also the, um, I also think it's like probably one of the most energy dense forms of power we can have. Yeah. And if you notice in this slide too, it talks about deep energy intensive sectors. And if you look more into um, energy.gov's uh, pages on this. There's actually um, thermal energy that's created from nuclear reactors. That's made. And it can actually aid in the production of hydrogen, which is also a clean energy source. And we talked about that in our last stream. So um, nuclear just has a lot of benefits in terms of what it can be used for. It's not just this energy giants or this behemoth, which it is, but it also like can help out in crit and like reducing the carbon released in industries. So it's actually very worth looking into as at, at the very least a transitionary state between what our current system uses, which is oil, coal and gases into like um, renewables such as wind or solar. Um, because it helps get those off the ground as well, like in terms of uh, hydrogen, like I just mentioned. Yeah, and there's also like you were saying, there there is no reason why we have to only rely on nuclear energy. Um, it probably it probably is a good idea to minimize how much how many nuclear power plants we need. Of course, like things like wind and solar would be preferable to anything else because they are completely clean. They don't even produce any waste after the, after manufactured. Um, yeah, besides, like, the actual, like, when the unit breaks down, then that's in and of itself, like, creating the energy. Right. So, yeah, I think we're, we're, I think we're, the, uh, we're, we're pretty much agreeing that uh, wind, solar, etc. are the preferable forms of energy. But if you want bang for your buck, um, you know, pound for pound, energy density, you want nuclear. And it's already a technology. Especially, it's also already a technology we're very good at building. Like, yeah, and especially right now, like with the, that we use, um, nuclear is a good replacement to get that energy right back to where we need it to be. Right. Currently, solar and wind is much harder to produce at the same level we're using right now. Right. Okay. So next slide. Yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, nuclear is the most reliable energy source. They can run yeah. all the time. They're, yeah, they're, um, they only need to be refueled every once in a while with new fuel rods, but other than that, they just essentially run themselves and humans just monitor them. Yeah, if you go to, uh, there's another slide on reliability, 14. Yeah, sorry, I put that towards the end. So slide 14. But it, all right. Is that what you wanted? Here's kind of like more of the reasons why it's most reliable. Yeah, exactly. Here's good. 
Mm. So, nuclear is more reliable because it's there. The plants are designed to last longer, so they require less maintenance, and they don't need to be refueled until maybe a year and a half uh, from the start of operation. Um, and then one thing we want to mention in this video. Um, natural gas and coal are inferior to nuclear. We don't want to just um, bring up how nuclear is good, but why coal and natural gas. And here it mentions that uh, natural gas and coal capacity factors are generally lower because they have to have routine maintenance and refueling. So we have to spend more energy refueling these things, the natural gas and coal, which are destroying the environment, whereas nuclear is completely clean. It doesn't make sense from just point of view. Right. All right. Um, yeah. And that's a slide four or? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So yeah, um, I think that we believe that nuclear would be a great addition to the Green New Deal because it creates jobs. Um, besides just being the most reliable and efficient form of energy production, nuclear could also be a great public works project as well. Yeah, like what we want to remember about the Green New Deal, beyond just being about being green, it's also supposed to be a new deal. A new deal. Uh, yeah, it's like... A Hopefully one very large uh, infrastructural program. <laughs> yeah, what do you say? So hopefully one that includes black people this time. Yeah, hopefully. I I would hope so. <laughs> but yeah, so it's supposed to be a public works program. It's supposed to actually you know benefit citizens. So it's like this large scale Keynesian project that is supposed to stimulate the economy, but it stimulates the economy where we provide work for individuals and. It's and helps the community rather than just like creating profits for some shareholders, right? This is actually going to produce energy for people to use and like have in their everyday life. So it's actually a project that's worthwhile. Yeah, not only does it make jobs, it makes like good paying jobs, like good paying union jobs. Like, yeah, it's you know, very um, amenable to you. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of protections. It's amenable to unionization. Another big thing about the nuclear industry is that because it's so big, it needs to rely a lot on governments, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something that is overly um, privatized, although the French government and companies like Oron, had, the French government used to like run most of the company Oron, which... Um, Man, mans a lot of the um, mining for uranium. Um, recently, in 2016, privatized. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that new is without its faults. But again, we want to emphasize that uh, that's a problem of capitalism. Right. It's not really a problem of the technology itself. So the fact that um, corporate shareholders are controlling and like. Uh, Manning the strings of this operation is a problem with all industries right now. But nuclear has a lot mm -hmm. of government oversight, and it needs to have that because of the safety regulation. So it's particularly um, good compared to other industries, and uh, it's particularly safe. Yeah, I think both of us would be pretty upset if these nuclear power plants were to be built and then just immediately fucking privatized. That that be yeah. That is not what we want <laughs> be, at all. Plus, like that's a disaster. Anyone anyone who's ever worked for like contractors before knows like the uh, all the goddamn corner cutting that contractors do. So you mean to tell me we can't put electric lines near water lines? Dude, okay, hold on. I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to interrupt. I'm about to interrupt the, the stream for a minute just to tell y'all like how shitty like private construction can be. Uh, I was, uh, we were, me and the crew were, uh, roofing an apartment complex a few months ago and the complex, um, had like, 
an overhang over the uh, doorway, right? So, like, here is, like, the face of the building, and there's a patio right here, and there's, like, a bit of an overhang right here uh, over the porch. And we went to the- I think you told me the story. <laughs> yeah, I think I told you the story before uh, in private. But so we get to the we yeah. get to the overhang over the porch to put new shingles on it. And we noticed that like between the overhang and the wall, like the brick wall, there was like a, a gap about that big when we realized that like the port like the overhang on the porch basically wasn't attached to anything. So we just like worked really carefully trying to, you know, put new shingles on that thing. But while I wasn't there, um uh, two of my crewmates were on the, uh, or on one of those overhangs, and just they said that they felt like a big shift, and then the whole thing just collapsed on them. Cause that thing was like not to code at all. They were using inferior wood. The seals weren't good. Like there's just all kinds of bullshit. It's construction, and it yeah. almost it almost killed. It almost took killed two of my coworkers. Uh, one of them landed on their head, but. Good news is that dude's head's empty, so concussions really don't really matter to him. <laughs> Jeez. Hopefully he had his helmet on. So we don't get helmets. Um, oh, see, that's even worse. Yeah, we don't get helmets. I mean, I I got a helmet. I, I, uh, I, acquired, I acquired a helmet. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I, see. I, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, dude, we don't get harnesses. We don't get hard hats. We don't even get like tool belts. We just have to like fucking just put. You just have to like find a way to like put sort of put tools that don't slide off a roof and like. And this, this shit is so bad, dude. Like, because we don't have tool belts, we just have to put our tools on the roof. And one day, like, uh, somebody put a pitchfork on the roof and it slid off the roof and almost like impaled the child. Yeah. So, <laughs> see, guys, this is. is why we need government oversight. Yeah, this is why we need government, government oversight. oversight. This is why. <laughs> This is why these kind of, uh, like, you know, assuming that we have to have a government, this is why it should yeah. be, you know, overseeing this shit. Yeah. I mean, before we get to that transition to anarchy, um, we got to start somewhere. And I would prefer having a lot more uh, oversight on these things, which is what nuclear provides. Like, yeah. I'm sure you would prefer, like, like on a nuclear plants than oh, yeah. like random yeah. I would rather I'd rather be the guy who changes the fuel rods than ever work on one of those roofs again. Yeah, you'd be more protected like working with those like highly radioactive material <laughs> than yeah. on top of a roof somewhere. Yeah, give me the spicy rocks. Hell yeah. Alright, so um we didn't like the way energy.gov phrase this but they do have they do yeah. make a point that i think that as leftists we can we can use yeah so basically they talk a lot about like well not, not too much but they made a statement on um national security and how the u.s needs to uh have energy diplomacy and you know uh prevents other places from uh well they didn't use that language necessarily but they're in saying that they're nuclear technologies right mm-hmm. and peaceful use of nuclear technologies um i, I, I don't want to get like, too much into the weeds there but uh, uh yeah like that also bizarre phrasing because the kind of nuclear technology the kind of technology that makes like nuclear power plants possible is nothing like the kind of te- technology that makes like bombs possible they're entirely they're two entirely exactly. different kinds of things exactly so like even though this report will go on to say that people are uninformed about nuclear because of the way it's presented in the media right there there's a little bit of misinformation uh hey you cut out after the, misinformation oh okay sorry so there's a lot of misinformation out there and this isn't the best way to combat it by equating nuclear energy with nuclear weapons Right. Like so you straight up, there is no way to turn a nuclear power plant into a bomb. It's not possible. It's not a thing that you can do, unless like that would take an act of like, in like, deliberate sabotage. <laughs> like, like, yeah, from the, like from the beginning, extensively. Of the project, yeah, you'd have to essentially just like design the. Po- you'd have to design a bomb and hope that nobody noticed. 
Yeah, from the beginning, yeah. which wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah which so happen. we just want we just wanted to mention that like we don't support like that type of hegemony anyway, but mm-hmm. what is good to mention on an international level since we want to like all leftists and all people really in an environmental project because an environmental project is global by necessity. Um, it's good to have nuclear experts and study nuclear. Hey, uh, it's good after, to study. Cut out after experts there. Okay, um, it's good to have these experts generally, just to know about nuclear science and technology. Yeah, and to have better solutions to environmental problems. Yeah, and also speaking of energy diplomacy, I think it'd be nice if we had a nice, you know, nationalized nuclear sector to, you know, decouple financialization away from um, energy production and to also, you know, de-incentivize the um, invasion of other countries with their oil if, since we wouldn't need it. Yeah, that would greatly reduce our uh, military ventures. <laughs> no, nah, we'd, still fin- we'd still find a way to do it. Gotta go to... Yeah. We'd probably start invading, like, Cameroon for its, like, thorium and yeah, see, that's the problem too. Like, mentioning, there's an increased privatization of these. In- we don't want to make it seem that this is perfect. Um, the global south definitely has their grievances here, um, but just in terms of energy production, it is cleaner. Yeah, yeah, this is this is definitely better. Um, all right, let's move on. Next slide. So yeah, capacity factor by energy source in 2019. As you can see, nuclear has by far like the highest energy capacity of all the other ones. Hell, it's higher than all the other ones combined. That's not true. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Forgot yeah. to for <laughs> Yeah, uh, not necessarily combined, but definitely the highest. Yeah. Um, I did like that brain the- far thing where my brain moved like almost all the decimals like to the left by one. <laughs> I got you. Um, yeah, so basically, nuclear, in addition to having the best capacity, it can also support wind and solar and hydropower, mm-hmm. particularly hydropower and anything that needs thermal energy to operate. And let's emphasize that all energy sources need some input of energy to begin with at first, solar being the least. Um, energy intensive to put in. You just need some men, women, or whoever to put these things on roofs. But in terms of uh, creating hydropower, for example, like I'm pretty sure most hydropower that I know of relies on turbines of some sort. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, there is some non-carbon neutral energy that needs invested in this to begin with hell all every why one not, of these except not, why not do it with nuclear on turbines of some sort yeah exactly so why not start off with nuclear a coal powered grid that we have now yeah all right so challenges let's go one public awareness so first most americans don't know what radiation is i don't know if you notice this alan yeah, for sure. Most people are. We we talked about this before. Like, some people are afraid of radio waves. Yeah, and like, literally those just come from going outside or turning yeah. up your car radio. Yeah, like people are afraid of like, like like the five G, like the five G, um, panic on social media earlier this year shows that like most Americans don't actually know what radiation is or what it does. So. To yeah. those of you who do not know, um, there are you could basically break radiation down into two different groups: ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. So, of course, things like um, uh, any part of the electromagnetic spectrum uh, less power energetic than UV, like like you know visible light, microwave, infrared, that kind of stuff, can't really damage your cells. Um, but anything like charged particle radiation or UVA, UVB, X-ray, 
uh, or gamma rays can. So yeah, for sure. Right, right. And the bad news is, is that in order for nuclear power to work, it does have to produce the ionizing radiation, which is where the heat comes from. Um, you get some spicy rocks uh, to boil some water. That spins a big fan. Um, but essentially, uh, there is like small amounts of ionizing radiation that just occur naturally in our environment all the time that our bodies are perfectly adapted to deal with. So as long as like nuclear waste is stored properly, there really isn't any danger for um, contamination in the environment. Yeah, and we'd like to, like, it's also good to mention that there's actually guidelines on how to sequester and store these wastes, right, for nuclear. Um, as opposed to other industries, like we'll mention later, the coal and the coal industry, like, they don't do as great of a job as they could with um, the waste products. So we're left to have these waste products just flowing around in the air, some of which have some radioactivity to them. Uh, right. I don't know the scale of that, but um, well, um, I have I have some I roughly have the scale later on, so we can get get more into that later on. Yeah, but it's important to note that with the nuclear, um, it's the it's the most well regulated industry in taking care of said that it creates. Whereas right now we're just letting capitalists basically mine for coal and oil. And letting the waste products go willy nilly and destroying the environment, whether that's a BP oil spill or just polluting the air, we're just letting them get away with that. Yeah, and um, we'll definitely. Uh, I think if you don't mind, Alan, next time we stream, we should definitely stream about like air pollution. Yeah, for sure. Oh, should we say that for a video? Maybe a video because let us know whoever is watching. Hi. But um, let us know what you think about that. Do you want a more in-depth video or quick stream? Yeah. And uh, Alan, if you wouldn't mind, you want to you wanna check our chat just in case it has a person in it? Uh, so you mean on Twitch? Yeah, Twitch. I can't really, uh, I can't really run straight, like, I can't really run, like, both the slides and OBS and check the chat at the same time. Okay. Yeah, thanks. But you're still logged into the Twitch channel, though. Oh, does that mean you can't? We can both log into it, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, let's find out. And if we can't, then I'll just log out. Well, while he's doing that, um, yes, I'm trying to get in right now. Yeah. There's also like a lot of, um, there's also a lot of research going on with, uh, different forms of, um, nuclear energy production. Like I know there's been like a lot of research recently, like a lot of buzz recently about like thorium reactors, which is pretty exciting because thorium is far more common than, um, uranium and it produces, uh, less of a harm to the environment They both mining it and sequestering the waste. That's pretty exciting. Um, I, I, I got in. Um, I used another account. Oh, so did you? I don't see anyone in the chat right now. Uh, cool. Oh, wait, no. I got I got somebody. A real? Alan Star. Wait, yeah, what? Um, you got somebody? It's not just you? You're not, you're not double counting yourself, are you? Nope. Cool. We got four watchers right now. Holy shit, dude. So Amazing. that includes, I think that's including so like three other people. Okay, cool. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> thank hey, you for watching. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's go on. Next slide. So the construction of new uh, nuclear, of new power plants is a massive project that takes decades to build. Well, can take decades to build them. Um, I think that you know if we had a large public works project run by a um, government, or even even better, a decentrally a decentralized, you know, democratically planned version of a uh, construction project. Um, these still these time these things still take a lot of time and energy to. Oh, thank you. Um, no thanks. These things still take a lot of time and energy to build. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, and it mentions that it discourages stakeholders. Um, so I don't want to just make the assumption that stakeholders mean shareholders, but again, the problem with the model of having stakeholders and everything is because it's capital intensive. Um, and again, that kind of points to just our economic system and like the issues regarding that. But in a different system, we wouldn't have to worry capital we wouldn't have to worry about capital but we would have to worry more about hey um the earth is dying what is the best way to get energy for the most amount of people in a clean way and for right now at least that's nuclear even though we want to transition um so the the problem here is that the fact that we have dis and the fact that they're being discouraged from a public project not the fact that large public projects exist right and if you think about um because if we think about like the number of nuclear power plants we'd have to build across the country simultaneously like that's a shit ton of jobs yeah for sure um i i think like you know bernie talked about the federal job yeah federal jobs um, that, that was also something that was like i, I don't know who was the originator of that. I've heard i've heard um professors like sandy darity uh talk about it before sanders mm. um and this is a great um stimulus to actually have that work out um you might ask like you know what jobs are you going to give people on a federal jobs guarantee nuclear power plant construction is very viable for that a mm. bunch of green new deals provisions are right um and also, like, these things work in tandem. <laughs> yeah, I think something else important to point out on this slide is, um, like for for example, in uh, Waynesboro, uh, Georgia, uh, yeah. the units are the first new reactors to begin to begin construction in the United States in more than thirty years. And this expansion project will support up to nine thousand workers at peak construction and create eight hundred permanent jobs at the facility. When new units begin operation in 2021 and 2022, so like that is, like, that is huge for a, for like any community. Yeah, and I could check the numbers real quick. Um, I don't know how up to date this article is, mm -hmm. but um, think about like how many people lost their jobs during COVID. Right, and, and also the fact that there are. The technology for nuclear power has advanced in the past 30 years. So uh, the Department of Energy supporting micro reactors and small modular reactors that are like way more flexible in size and power capacity. So these might be able to be, be built more quickly um, in, in like places that don't have as high energy costs as others might. So that could be something that um, something that should really be looked into and uh, considerations that should also be made if we plan on expanding um, other forms of renewable energy, like truly renewable energy, like solar and wind, uh, might not need like the massive power plants of the past if we're going to include solar and wind too in these projects. Uh, yeah, so micro reactors might be something that's a little um, more uh, future sighted, I guess. Yeah. In that case. Yeah. But nevertheless, there's still these large projects that deserve consideration right and we still had to build a lot of them okay so uh something else is a high operating cost which is once again more of a problem with um capitalism you know i think it's more important to have a reliable source of energy and i think it's more important that to have um people have good jobs but um high operating, high operating cost isn't something that's unique to nuclear it's it's endemic to just large infrastructural projects in general, you know. Um, especially in energy production. Like, I'm pretty sure coal power plants and, like, oil refineries have extremely high operating costs, too. But the fact that they're, like, they generate so much revenue and are also supported by, you know, our, our, our government allows them to continue on anyway. Uh, but under a nationalized program, or maybe, uh, maybe in a program that just has, like, national, like, national subsidies and like worker run facilities um i don't think operating high operating cost is really going to be 
uh, that much of a stumbling block for us. It's more of we just need the will to do it. Also, it's the fact that like we have to think about the costs of staying where we are, right? Yeah. Um, th- those far outweigh the cost mm-hmm. that it takes to operate these plants. Like, yeah, just think about like the a- medical the medical costs that people go through, both workers and those who live in the community, uh, for coal coal mines or things of that nature. Yeah, or even like how much environmental and direct health, uh. Like harm, like bodily harm that um, coal power plants do, right? Like, like fucking a third of the pe- like children who grow up in my community, or some ridiculous number like that, um, have or you know develop asthma by the time they're like twelve mm-hmm. because of because of the amount of pollution in the area, which wouldn't be necessary with which wouldn't which wouldn't have happened if we had like you know like electric transportation fueled by nuclear power plants instead of these gas guzzling vehicles driving around and also like the uh, coal po- burning power plants that exist in, in uh, my my home- hometown yeah for sure well we're gonna touch on that in like another stream like oh, you yeah. wanted but it's it's definitely like something to bring up it's like yeah, how much does this cost you now too. oh <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I guess like you know We'll keep that on the low, <laughs> but but um yeah, it's good to notice like what is it costing us to stay where we're at, right? Like, uh, th- this is a constant thing we'll get for on the left is how are you going to pay for that? And the universal answer to that is, in my opinion, should be like, what does it cost now? And I think that you know, human lives and the future of the planet. Or at least the people that live on the planet far outweighs the cost of operation. Right, and there is currently research by, um, you know, by the Department of Energy itself, and funded by the uh, um, National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy, working to um, make lower cost nuclear reactors. You know, things that have yeah, like for sure fewer moving parts, um, so that like, the maintenance cost is lower. Uh, I think I, I think I sat to a seminar or a colloquium about this uh, a couple of years back. Um, I see, but um, yeah. Also, um, you know, yeah. Once again, like nuclear isn't, of course, the solution. So it's not like we're saying that every every fucking kilowatt of a power that comes um, that that this produced in America has to be nuclear. So. Using things like yeah. wind and solar uh, in conjunction with nuclear will also drive down operating costs since there will just be less production. Yeah, and then there's like this uh, little blurb they have at the bottom. Um, basically, there's like cladding you can put on pellets mm-hmm. to make things more efficient yep. and reduce costs. Yeah, and also the uh, micro reactors and other smaller reactors would have lower maintenance costs just by being smaller. Yeah, of course. Um, let okay. Let's go on to the next slide. So, um, this is something that I wanted to talk about before. Oh, damn! But fonts wrong, colors wrong, sizes wrong on this. Oh well. Nah, dude, you're good. All right. So, um, what we brought up earlier about um, new uh, coal power plants and radioactivity. Fly ash it makes up eight, about 88% of the uh, combustion waste from burning coal. And fly ash contains trace amounts of uranium and uh, thorium. Which, by the way, anything, any mineral you mine from that strata of the earth is going to contain um, higher levels of radioactive materials than the surface will, just by nature of them being deeper into the earth. Um... So about 99% of the fly ash is captured by the filters, uh, but that stuff still has to be dealt with, even if it's not going into the air. You still have to put it somewhere. It's the same pro- same problem you have with like nuclear waste. And about 50% of that fly ash is, well, according to the American Coal Ash Association, about 50% of that fly ash is recycled into, well, 50% of the fly ash and um, 
and uh, other byproducts of uh, coal combustion are recycled into usable materials. I think if you only count the fly ash, it's actually 43%, so it shouldn't say 50 there. That's, that's a mistake on my part. Uh, these materials can include stuff like um, the gravel used on roofing tiles, um, uh, concrete, uh, stuff like that. Um, I think ash can be used in cement production. Um, yeah, so you, you were mentioning that cement, though, like the production of that isn't clean to begin with, though? Yeah. So concrete and cement production is not a clean process at all. Which is unfortunate because you're going to need an awful lot of cement to make a nuclear power plant or any kind of large infrastructural project. But one, uh, concrete requires concrete's made of three things: um, gravel, sand, and cement. So the gravel and the sand make up the bulk of the material, and then the cement is what holds that together. But uh, the sand that's used must be the correct size and texture. If it, I think if it's too smooth or the grains are too large or too small, the properties of the of the concrete change. And I think if the grains are too small, the concrete has a higher chance of like forming cracks and fractures. Mm. Um, what that means though is that like only some only certain environments, like I think beaches, actually produce the correct kind of sand. So like beaches are mined for sand and the earth is the earth is literally running out of sand as surprising that is it's running out of usable sand i should say um mm -hmm. and the curing process like when, after you've made the concrete and you've poured you began to pour it the curing process of the cement produces an awful lot of like it outgasses an awful lot of co2 as well so yeah um it's kind of it seems like every single thing humans do is going to produce co2 no matter what we're just trying to yeah, I mean, point. yeah, and I, I guess like what I want to bring up there is that you just mentioned that process, which is like pretty terrible, and then that that the best that they could muster the American coal and ashes. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical of them, but that's all right. Yeah, me right? too. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, the best that they could muster was that some of this fly ash gets used in a process. That you just outlined very well is not clean. <laughs> so it's not clean, like, and the, uh, because the once you burn off most of the like all of the carbon, what you're left with after you burn coal is like the minerals, and those minerals will contain like more concentrated amounts of uranium and thorium than the than the coal would have just by you know conservation of mass. Yeah. Uh, so fly ash has not captured that one percent. Well, the at least the American Coal Ash Association claims is 1% of fly ash that's not captured, uh, can build up in the topsoil, and is 100 times more radioactive than the waste from nuclear power plants, which is uh, which I was really surprised to hear. But you know, because a lot of the waste from nuclear power plants is essentially water. That's I guess that's not that surprising. Um, mm -hmm. The good news is, according to the EPA, the small amount of radioactive fly ash that... Um, does escape from coal coal power plants does not seem to pose a health concern, or at least there's no research I've seen that can directly relate any like cancers or adverse health uh, health effects to the radiation from power plants, coal power plants. I mean, mm. um, I would I would want to like go more in depth on like that topsoil thing. Maybe we could find something in the future. Yeah, because especially because if you think like. Heavy metals like uranium and thorium tend to bioaccumulate. Like organic, you know, mm -hmm. organisms tend to hold on to those heavy metals their entire lifetime and accumulate them. And the higher up on the food chain you go, the more concentrated they become. Biomagnification, yeah. Yeah, biomagnification, um, which is like, uh, to anyone who, who isn't familiar with that concept, is just like a consequence of the second law of thermodynamics. You know, just like by ascending trophic levels, you have to, like, you know, people, organisms higher up in the food chain have to consume more things that are more likely to contain certain heavy metals. I don't know, maybe we have to make a, maybe we have to make an entire presentation on that one too. Yeah. I guess, like, a good way to think about it too is through microplastics, which you talked about uh, on Twitter today. 
<laughs> but uh, basically, like, if you were like, there's a lot of accumulation of uh, microplastics, and small organisms consume those, or they get into their system somehow. Then up on upon the food chain, you have, uh, fishes that will consume those creatures, and they consume more of those creatures than the creatures consumed something else previously. Right. As you go up the food chain, more um, like raw organism or more prey is consumed, and by the time it gets to us, we're usually the apex predators. We just get more of the crap that these animals have been ingesting. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like to see some more research on... I didn't really have time to look too deep into this topic, but um, I was too busy working on our on our actual proper video we're going to make. But I do mm -hmm. want to see more research into, like, the bioaccumulation of, like, uranium and thorium in plants that are near nuclear power... I mean, I'm sorry, uh, coal power plants. I think that'd be interesting to look into. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let the us point, know if you want to. The point I want to see the slide is that coal power plants per, per, um, actually actually put into the environment more radioactive waste than nuclear power plants. Yet there isn't the same amount of fear mongering amount around coal power plants in respect to their nuclear waste production or their radioactive waste production. I should say. And that's by design. It's that's by design. Um, and I would also like to see if we can find any connection between like anti coal or anti nuclear lobbies and like fossil fuel industries. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a lot there. Yeah, basically, probably yeah, unfortunately, like, like, what? I <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I didn't hear. I said, uh, uh, 60s hippies are a psyop. Um, Imagine. Yeah, anti-nuclear activists are a fucking psyop. Uh, they're paid by the oil lobbies. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably the CIA and the FBI, too, and, and MI6. Imagine. Yeah. Um, remember, any anyone we don't like is automatically CIA. Anyone who says something we don't agree with is, is probably a shill. Yeah. I mean, is it better than blaming George... Yeah, at least, yeah. At least our at least our conspiratorial bullshit isn't anti-Semitic. True, and actually has some evidence behind it. some history. Yeah, so yeah, let's move yeah, on. Not in this case. We're just kidding. Yeah, in this case, we're just we're just uh, we're just talking shit. No offense to hippies. No, no hippies, hippies don't are, don't at us. We love no, you. Dude, most of the hippies I know are like relatively cool. They just have some like real shit takes on like nuclear, nuclear. other things. Yeah. Let's not get started on veganism. <laughs> let's not even get started on that. Let's not get started on fucking... Yeah, let's not. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. why are... Uh, oh, yeah, we already did a slide, didn't we? So, we, we did a little bit of this, but I, I guess, like, just to talk about the energy production... Okay. Um. Yeah, so they usually produce one gigawatt electricity. I don't know the time period that they're talking about for this, though. Hmm... Yeah, there's no uh, these units are kind of nonsense. Yeah, but nevertheless, it's larger than any here. Right. They're probably um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what that what that unit is about. Yeah, but it it's something to note that like I I guess to take it at face value, what we what we showed before is that. Nuclear is much better at producing energy than any other form of energy that we yeah gone through until we until we find a way to actually master uh cold fusion, which of course only twenty years away yeah oh that constant twenty yeah just... it's only twenty years away it was twenty years away twenty years ago it was twenty years away twenty years before that no but if we if we know how to use taco max then We'll learn how to do it eventually. Just gotta keep using those tokamak reactors. So I think that's uh oh that's it, isn't it? Yeah. We kind of sped through this one. I think this is a topic that we were both like uh, decently knowledgeable. 
Yeah, a little or, bit. A little bit. I was kind of afraid yeah. to talk about this because, like, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty of um, like nu- of like nuclear science, just simply because uh, I have a couple nu- e friend, nuclear engineering major friends who would roast the, the life out of me if I got something wrong. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, and I can't hey, get them to make some notes for you. I can't imagine anything more humiliating than roasted by an engineer. Oh yeah, engineers, we love you, but uh. Physics over engineering Hell yeah. all day, every day. You rely on us. Yeah, dude. I, I think that, uh, yeah, this was a good stream covered what we needed. Yeah, do we, uh, anything else you want to say about nuclear or any other form of energy production while we're still here? Um, I would just say that it's good to look into the pros and cons of nuclear and not just. From people who are lobbyists, uh, a lot of the time we'll see that uh, in industry, um, people will list pros and cons, but they have their own agendas. Um, I would genuinely seek out scientific knowledge on these subjects right? and these topics. Like, read a study. We can try to post some <laughs> at some point. We can go more in depth on this topic if you all want. Yeah, and if you don't want to read the study, you can just ask us instead. Yeah, for sure. Dude, I've been reading studies like nonstop for the past like week, and I understand why I understand why like normies don't want to do this shit. This sucks. I don't know, like for me it's fun. No, I mean for like me, it's, it's not fun. like I'm not saying like I don't enjoy it, because I, I I do. Mm-hmm. But like just the sheer amount of work it takes to like really understand. Like I was reading that paper about uh the that, that seminal uh wiggly paper about um thermal expansion mm-hmm. and the reason it's taking me so long is because like every they keep mentioning stuff i've never heard of which makes me go back and then read their citations so like yeah, imagine the one, average like, layperson yeah it's the average layperson is just be like an insurmountable task yeah it's like it's very daunting yeah, especially like if you want to, like people don't understand something in depth, you gotta read the, the citations, which could also, which also will have citations, and you just basically like, there just has and to. And the be citations a limit. are two pages. Yeah, there has to be a limit where you just decide that I don't really need to understand this thing one hundred percent to talk about the topic I want to talk about. Yeah, there's a cost benefit analysis there. Yeah. Um, also, like, I really was trying to get a better understanding of that model that they were using, because it is a really interesting model that we'll definitely talk about later. Uh, and unfortunately, I'll probably have to, like, cut that out of the video, because no one but, but us is going to care. <laughs> you mean to tell me people don't care about differential equations? No, I, um, I don't know if I, I don't know if our, if our audience cares much about differential equations. Rats. No, I'm kidding. I I understand the trepidation around math better than a lot of people. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think that about does it for this stream. Yeah. Peace. Thank you to our viewers. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we got viewers. Yeah. We have a sweet olive that said, I care. Wait, math, ew. Yay, good job, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, wait. All right. Right. Wait, one of our viewers is Olivia. She's just, she's part of the channel. That doesn't count. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. But I, lo- I just <laughs> lost our slide. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Oh no, the Wi Fi is trying to quit on me. I got dog barking in the background now. Yeah, uh, the dog here uh, luckily stopped barking before the stream. Okay, Owl and Star said that we rock high five, Math Eel, LMFAO, Sam. I know, I know, Alan right. Star. They're they're good people. All right, nice.
Nice. Yeah. Uh, Alan Star, when we finally get that script written, I'm going to send it to you for uh, for editing. Uh, I can't pay you, but I can I can ask mom to bake cookies. That's wholesome. My mom makes the fucking bomb cookies, dude. Dude, everyone does every uh, physics major's mom know how to? Bake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd hope so. I'd be it'd be a shame if your mom didn't know how to bake cookies. Imagine. My mom makes like bomb ass like cakes and pies and cookies and all the time. Yo, we got a bot in That's the fine. chat. Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want. To... Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're moving on up. Yeah, it's not nobody now. <laughs> all right, I think I'm gonna call. I think I'm gonna call a day on the stream. Thanks for watching. Very man. cool. What? Okay, Olivia wants to show us her cat before I end the stream. Say goodnight. Hey. Say goodnight to Kiki. Night, Kiki. All right, goodnight, everyone.